Okay, welcome everybody to Parsha A5783. The Parsha is, uh, has a lot of very, again, fundamental ideas of Judaism, as many of these surrounding Parsha do. And uh, this Parsha talks about that there's a blessing, A, you're supposed to see that you, there's a blessing involved, a reward for good deeds and a punishment for bad deeds. There's blessings and there's curses. There will be mitzvot that we have to accept upon ourselves, especially when we get into Eretz Israel. We'll have to drive out the other nations. We don't want them to be any kind of influence us, not religiously, not ethically. We have a Torah that's supposed to influence us and nothing else. Um, there's laws of the of the karbanot that will be given in the Beit Hamikdash and the, the, in the temple that will be what will be built when we get to Israel. This is what the Jews were being told. And uh, obviously, there are certain other laws that will be that become relevant together with uh, with receiving the Torah and taking the Torah and, and uh, the, the blessings and curses, kashrut, uh, firstborn animals, the yomim tovim. Everything uh, is at least mentioned briefly in this parsha and worthy of discussion. Uh, in our uh, in our discussion today, however, as we Focus on just certain verses that will be uh, and certain ideas. You will notice that we're very focused on two distinct areas of the parsha and almost ignoring everything else. But don't worry, we have three other years. That's right, about three hours worth of Torah. Besides this, you can look in the, in the playlist on our YouTube channel, the Shul YouTube channel, Young Israel of San Diego YouTube channel, uh, with, uh, with uh, at least three hours worth of Torah on this Parsha alone. Feel free to peruse the, uh, that channel to look at all kinds of different topics that we've discussed in the past. Uh, almost every class we've ever had is, uh, is recorded and there. Uh, with that said, let's get right into the Parsha. It begins with, Look, see, I've given to you today blessing and curse. Uh, the blessing will be if you follow, if you listen to the mitzvot, the laws of Hashem, your God, that I command you today. Next verse says, And the, and the curse, Mitzvot Hashem El Kechem will be if you don't listen, if you don't guard, if you don't keep the mitzvot, the laws of Hashem, your God, and you stray from the path upon which I have commanded you, Hayom, today, uh, sorry, it should be Elohim Acharim, and you go after, uh, uh, Safari seems to have aired here, it should not be a kuf, it should be a hey. Uh, anyway, and you you walk after other gods, you follow after them. I share lo them that you don't know, they don't exist. You don't know them. You're they have to be they're fictional. They have to be made up because yeah, the real God is the real God, and these gods, quote unquote, they are ones you don't know because they did not do anything for you. Not like our God who has done everything literally for you and continues to. So write the Kitzur Baal Haturim on this verse. He notices that et abracha abracha amar et. It says et when you uh, when you, when you read it. Uh, the uh, there's the untranslatable word in Hebrew of et, which is supposed to focus on a particular noun. And. Um, and uh, when it, that's when it comes to the blessings. Uh, uh, and it, but when it comes to the curses, it doesn't say the word et. So, uh, so he notices that, and he, um, and he says, wrong thing. Hold on. Yeah, and he says, atabracha ba'alva taf. Uh, so, uh, so, so it seems strange. And furthermore, 
the so, so he he explains that one explanation could be that at represents not just the word this untranslatable word of at but at is also the first and last letter of the hebrew aleph bet aleph and tough at so therefore when it comes to bracha you're gonna get at you're gonna get from aleph to tough you're gonna get the whole thing the whole blessing that comes with doing the mitzvot the blessing is complete it's unimaginable it's infinite just like the aleph bet has everything in it. Your blessing, your reward for fulfilling the mitzvot is unimaginable. Me aleph ve'ad taf. Me'im b'chukatai ad komimiyot ve'klala but the klala me'vav ad hey is just from vav to hey, which is very short, from literally from six to five and goes backwards. And uh, basically saying that the even, even in punishing us, Hashem is going to limit how much we're punished and and, uh, and and therefore uh the the blessing is so much greater than the than, than we can possibly imagine the the curse the punishment is that is bad but uh but th- there's even a limit to that as we know the Gemara elsewhere tells us the Gemara tells us that the uh that the, the, even even the wicked are only punished in uh, Gehenna only for 11 months, whatever that means. It's a spiritual idea. What, what's 11 months? They're, they're spiritual beings. They don't need the time. Time is, is a physical thing. I, uh, this is not the time for that discussion. But, uh, you can look at our uh, Jewish life cycles class on that to, to hear more. But Rabbi Isaac Bernstein, uh, who I've heard this from, uh, brings up a few interesting ideas based on what we just said. Why is it now, if that's true, that the blessing is so great and so infinite, but the curse is it? Why, why is that? So to come up with an answer, he brings up a, an interesting Vilna Gon commentary on Mishle, the book of Mishle, Proverbs, chapter 10, verse 24. So it says there, Megorat Rasha he tivo enu, betava tzadikim yitain. So what the the Russia wants, what the evil person wants to do, hurts him. But whatever the whatever the tzaddik desires, tava tzaddikim mitain, the whatever the tzaddik desires is given to him. Tzaddikim, what they want, they get it. But this is a little bit strange. Says the Vilna Gaon, Megora Rasha he to aveto. He says in. Uh, in the second, here in the third line here. Um, yeah. Um, he said, no, let's start with the first one. Ki harasha mitiyare min ha'averu shibiyado. A person who's, an, who's evil should be afraid of the sins in his hands. Why? Ha'averu atzma mishlama lo. The sin itself will punish him. That's why it says, in the verse, whatever Begora at Russia, the plans of the wicked person, he to voaino. That is the thing that's going to hurt him. The evil itself hurts him, not Hashem, as you will see, but the evil itself. The the desires of the of the righteous will be acquired. He says he says uh, here. He wants what is it? Sadik one. He wants Hashem, and he's going to get it. The, it, the, it, it, you might have thought that the mitzvah gives you the reward. No. The reward comes from Hashem directly. When you do a mitzvah, the mitzvah doesn't reward you. It's not like the mitzvah is its own reward. When you do a mitzvah for the right reason and for to serve Hashem, Hashem rewards you. However, just like, just like we just said from the Balaturim that there is no end to this. From Aleph to Taf, you get the, there's an infinite reward for, for a mitzvah. So too, because a mitzvah is a good thing to do and you're doing it for Hashem and Hashem is infinite, therefore the reward is infinite. 
It's not a never ending reward. But uh, sins are called plans or whatever. But regarding the mitzvah, it's called yitain. The reward for mitzvah is sometimes, as we know, as we've spoken about before, it's sometimes in the world to come. Amar yitain, it's going to be given to him. But the actual effect of a sin Darker shell, ha clipper, leard of the take of a tadir, the chain amar to an. It's the sin itself punishes you. You're hurt by the thing you do. It's not Hashem punishing you, it's the sin punishing you. That act, that evil act. He says, similarly, he saw in the Palge Mayim from Rav Yaakov of Lisa, wrote a commentary on Echa. Which we just read in, uh, in uh, Tisha B'Av, chapter three, verse thirty-eight of Eicha says, "Mipi elyon lo teitze haraot v'hatov." So, because it's it's, uh, it's 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 kind of asking in a, it's a rhetorical question. Mipi elyon isn't it from from Hashem? Lo te haraot v'hatov. That doesn't raot bad things and tov good? Don't they both come from Hashem? Hashem creates everything, right? So, so he says it's interesting. Says the Palge Mayim that when it comes to evil, it says haraot, which means plural, and ends with oat. That means it's plural. Evil, evils, right? Vatov is singular, good. So. What's uh what's, what why why is one singular one plural? Masha Amaharaot Balash and Rabin, the reason it says Raot in plural, the Ato Balash and Yachid, Hayot ki gam onesh ara inu bab etam ito ki me oto lo tete ra rak ara haba al ha adam ha avon atmo ose ki al yede ha avon. The evil comes, the, the punishment. Uh, the evil that that the people are afflicted with happens from the evil that they do. The evil does the actual punishing. You don't have to worry about Hashem punishing you. The act itself is its own punishment. He goes into detail. He says, really, what was created is a malach, a mashkit. There's a, there's a destructing angel that's created by the act of what you do. He proves this out from a, a verse in uh, Yeshayahu in Isaiah 64. Verses six to seven, and it says haraot belosh and rabim. So that's why it says evil in, in plural. Ki ena kadosh baruch hasiba. It's lo roa masa lo roa onish. So Hashem has nothing to do with the evil. Hashem has nothing to do with the punishment. That's you. That's on your own. And what it's in plural because that comes from you. It comes from with the things that you did. You didn't do one evil thing. Almost every evil thing in the world anyway has other evil components. So all of those components all add up to the punishment. As opposed to Masha in Ken Be'atov. But not as, this is in contradistinction to the good. Who brings you the good? HaKadosh Baruch Hu Hashem makes the good. And that is singular because that comes all from Him. Whatever good you get is all good and it's all encompassing. And as we said before, it's infinite because it all comes from Hashem. And that brings us back to our verse, which uh, which this all started with. And uh, this is, the, again, the explanation of why it says here, et habracha, and does not say et haklala. It says et habracha because the bracha is is more than just the blessing. It's all encompassing. It's infinite, and it comes from Hashem, who is infinite, as opposed to klala, which is not et. It's not all of too tough. It's not infinite because it is a physical thing. It comes from a physical uh, act, and it is punished, uh, God willing, in a physical way, so that uh, so that it's not forever. Um, while we're on the subject, while we're on this verse, let's look at something that uh, that Rav Moshe Feinstein writes in Darash Moshe. Yeah. 
So in uh, his second explanation on this verse, he wants to uh, explain in Od Nir Elomar Papa the Nakat Ru'ah Baloshan Yachi. It's interesting that we're using uh, singular language, Lipnechem, Baloshan Rabim, and for you, right, Re'e is singular, right? Uh, you should see. And then it says, in front of you, and this is like the southern way of in front of y'all, right? In front of you, plural. And why is that? So it says, the Kavana Lomar, the Im Asha Tishmu, if you listen to Hashem, Loshan Rabim, this is plural. Hainu Shaklal, yeah, Rov Tadikim, Asti, yeah, Bracha Holam. But there's a lot of Tadikim, they all bring blessing to the world. And even somebody who's not fit to receive that blessing, mitzad asmo, from his own behavior, yit barach, still gets the bluff, still gets the bracha, still gets the blessing. Im lo tishmu shahu lashon rabim. But if you don't listen, that's in plural. To yeah, has v'shalom aklala. The the God forbid to receive blessing. As Afmish Zakai Yebaklal Haonish. Anybody who's worthy of it gets that punishment. Who Marsher Debarti Al Asata de Ganecha. This is something similar to what he wrote, wrote on the Asata de Ganecha earlier. Shari Bain Osim Ritsono Shel Makum, somebody who doesn't fulfill the, the desires the, of Hashem. Afishari Mishmoa Tishmu Perusho Shabashvil Haklal Etena Bracha Bumata Artsachem. And so the, the blessing is that they, they're going to get rain and it's time uh, until land. Vivarachu Mamela Gam Shein Osim. Even the people who don't do what they're supposed to do, obviously, when it rains, it doesn't just rain in one spot, as it, as it says in the Gemara in, uh, in the Brachot. 35 when it when it rains it rains for everybody even even people who don't really deserve it still get the blessing and that's why it's in plural uh because everybody gets the blessing uh all right so the uh the, the point being is that uh, one moment. Okay, sorry. Uh, so right here we go. Um, well, what most of us, as we're going to see when it comes to Rosh Hashanah and such. Um, one moment. What happened? Timing is everything, right? It's working. Give me a moment. I'm sorry. There we go. And last but not least. All right. Baruch Hashem. Sorry about that. Um, I'm multitasking here. Uh, so well, most of us are what's called Benuni. Most of us are considered average. And being average, Hashem has uh, rewards us Based on what, uh, based on not necessarily what we really deserve, we still get blessing if you're just in the in the right company. This is another good reason why it's important to uh, to choose your company wisely, to uh, to be around good, great people, and God willing, uh, we'll all receive the blessings that we deserve, and sometimes don't deserve. All right.
We're going to skip ahead a little bit. Chapter 11, verse 29. Literally one more verse later. So uh, this is the begin. We, we're going to get more details about this particular event later on in the parsha, and later on in the Torah. But at this point, the Torah tells us, When Hashem sends you to the land that you will inherit, you will receive that blessing that we talked about. You will accept it on this mountain called Grizim. You will receive the, the curse on, uh, on, the, on, on Mount Eval. Just wanted to point out hold one moment. Rob Hirsch has a very illuminating short commentary here. I don't have it in the sources. Maybe I'll add it uh, later. But it's a, it's a beautiful point worth mentioning. And uh, this is a hist- historical point. It's still true today. And we know, so it says Mount Grizim and Mount Eval are both in the mountain range of Ephraim, and the contrast in their appearance can still be clearly seen. So I don't know if he saw it himself or if he heard from others. Either way, Mount Grizim, located to the south of the valley of Shechem, is verdant, with gardens covering the terraces on its slope. Mount Eval on the north side is steep, barren, and desolate. Mount Eval is about 2,900 feet high, a little higher than Mount Grizim. Uh, yeah, he quotes a source. Um, das Helige Land by Joseph Schwartz, 1852. Accordingly, these two mountains standing side by side present a striking vis- This is him writing now. These mountains standing side by side present a striking vis- visualization of blessing and curse. Both of them rise from the same soil. Both are watered by the same rain and dew. The same air passes over them both. The same pollen is blown over them both. Yet Mount Eval remains starkly barren, while Grisim is covered with lush vegetation to its very top. In the same way, blessing and curse are not dependent on external circumstances, but on our inner receptivity to the one or the other, on our attitude toward that which brings blessing. Our attitude. It's not just... You do so your actions itself. Our attitude itself is part of what becomes the blessing. That was just an interesting piece. And what I really wanted to show you, what, what's in our sources here today, is from the Gemara in Sota 32a, where it talks about exactly what happened, what was the process by which this, this blessing and curse was actually given on the mountain. So it says there in the Gemara, six tribes went to the top of Mount Grizim, Shishi Shvatim Al Rosh Har Eval, six tribes went to the top of Har Eval, Vakonim Halavim, Vaaron, Omdim Lamata, Emta, the Kohanim and the Levim, and the Aaron itself were in between them, between the two mountains in the middle. Akonim Makifin et Aaron, the Levim et Ha Kohanim, Vakal Israel, Mikan Mikan. So they were on each, either side of the Kohen, Kohanim and the Levim. Shanamar and says of Khal Yisrael was a kind of showed uh Shotrim Shoftim Umdi Mizamize Aaron. So it says it in the in the, in the verses I said later on, about uh, ten chapters later in the Torah, we're gonna have for this. Have a Pneum Klape Har Grizim, they would turn to they turn their heads to Har to Har Grizim, Patku Bracha, and they would start with a bracha. Blessed is the man who does not create a statue. Both tribes on both sides of the mountain, on both mountains, they both said Amen. Then they would turn to the to the people, to the mountain of Eval. They would start with the blessing. Krishna is the man who does make a statue. And both those and these both said Amen. Ad shigomrim brachot the klalot until they finished all of the brachot and all of the klalot achar kach and afterwards heviu et avanim. Then they would they, they they put up the stones. 
Ubanu at a Mizbeach and they built an altar of Sadu Besid, they covered all these in plaster, Bakatwalov at Kola Divaya Torah. And then they wrote on them all the words of the Torah, Bishivim Lashan in 70 languages. So the Gemara says, Shneamar, because the verse says, as it's going to say, as I said before, and we'll get to it later on in the Varim, that it was well explained, and that means that they were that they were written in all 70 languages. Now it happens to be there's a machloket about two of these issues we said. That we said, first of all, that the, the entire Torah was written on them. So that's actually a machloket amongst the Rishonim, but how much of the Torah was actually written? Was it the whole Torah? So the Rav Said Yagon says, no, it wasn't the whole Torah. It was just the Ten Commandments. And as I've said in, in previous classes, I don't know if it's recorded, but it's worth saying, it's not from me, that the entire Torah can be learned out from the Ten Commandments. The Ten Commandments are the basis for all of the 613 mitzvot. Uh, it needs, of course, study and discussion. And there are literally books written by the Rishonim sometimes um, about that very um, about that very topic. Okay, Baruch Hashem. Um, um, and uh, another famous question is when it says that they wrote it in 70 languages, so the question becomes, why did they write in 70 languages? Uh, wh- who is this for? Right? If it's for the Jews, the Jews should know Hebrew. Why, why, should, why, should, it, why should it be in Russian? Or whatever the 70 languages were. The Russian wasn't one of them. But, uh, right, so the so, so, what, so what's, what's all this for? So the Marsha says it's for the future nations. The, the Russians, indeed, and the, uh, and the Spaniards, and the Portuguese, and the Chinese. They should all see and appreciate that we have something called the Torah. The Torah has great wisdom. And, uh, and they should see that, that this is something that the Jewish people have. Perhaps, yeah. Maybe it'll be an influence on them. Who knows? The important thing is that they should see this. That's what the Marsha says. The Tosefet Yom Tov, his commentary on the Mishnah, says, no, not like that. The, the only reason they wrote it in 70 languages is because it says, Be'er it has to be explained well. What does that mean to explain it? It means to explain it in a way that people will be able to understand it, even, uh, uh, even in other languages. All right, Baruch Hashem. Um, okay, uh, next thing I wanted to do, uh, and I, get, I understand I'm skipping here quite a bit, but uh, we're going to skip to chapter 15, verse 7. And we'll see what I really want to point out, and I guess I'll point it out now. I want to point out that the Torah is vast and deep. And it has it has in it uh, references and hints to things be, way beyond the Torah and into history, into the future, and prophecy, and, and much, much more. The Torah tells us the laws of uh, poor people and. Lots of us, uh, we have to give tzedakah. And it says, Ki If you have amongst you a poor person, from one of your brothers, Sharecha, that's amongst you, but in your land, Don't keep your hand away from him. Give him, you know, don't harden your heart. They're poor people. They need your help. Don't ignore them. So aside from all of the halachic ramifications of all this and all of the possible things you can say, the Or Chaim says a beautiful thing in his, in his uh, and he gives a pshat, he gives a ex- normal explanation, a simple explanation. Then uh, his, uh, his like fourth explanation is one that's more, let's call it allegorical. Alderech remez. Right, there are four ways to learn anything in the Torah. Pshat, Remez, Drash, and Sod. Ethical rule. So the, so the simple explanation, some ethical explanation, some 
hints to something deeper, and then the sod is getting into the gematria, uh, the gemat, not gematria, into uh, Kabbalah, into mystical ideas, um, magical ideas, etc. Uh, magic is the wrong word. Uh, mystical ideas, let's keep it at that. Whether it's p- practical or theoretical Kabbalah is a different issue. So he says, B'derach Remez Yirmoz, the Torah is now hinting to something allegorical as well. It's trying to teach you an important thing about a particular person in our nation. Who's that particular person? We are waiting for this person and hoping for this person until he finally gets here. And who is this? Who? Melech Yisrael Mishikhenu. And this is our king, the king of Israel, the Mashiach, who we're waiting for and, and just pining for constantly. Asher who Evion. He is called an Evion. He is called a poor person. He's, he's compared by the rabbis and, and by the Nevi'im as, as a, to, a, to an Ani, to a poor person. Ha'omram. Nimshal Ani, he's compared to an Ani, he's called Ani Verochev Al Hamor. It says in the Gemara in Sanhedrin 98a, it's quoting a, a Pasuk, a verse in Zechariah 9 9. He's a poor person riding on a donkey. And of course, this is one of the ways that the Mashiach can come. The Gemara there goes into detail. There's two different possibilities of how Mashiach can come, either in the good way or the not-so-good way, if we deserve Mashiach, or if we're so low that we do not deserve him. So if we do not deserve him, he's going to come as a poor man riding on a donkey. About as poor as you can get in those days. Now, he's not coming in on a carriage, on a horse, on, the, on a, the fanciest electric vehicle. He's coming uh, He's coming in on a donkey. A pinto, right? So, uh, Right, so, so he's supposed to be poor. That's why our verse, our pasuk, says, if there is amongst you a poor person, evyon. Amongst you, what does that mean? He has to be, because of you, he will be among you. It doesn't mean just among you. It means because of you. He will come because of you. And he will come poor, because of you, because of your behavior. You've earned this kind of Mashiach. Our sins will make it so that, first of all, it'll take a long time for him to come. But not only that, but also, he's going to be poor. He shouldn't be poor. The king has to be rich. Well, of course, later on, we'll make him rich. The king has to be supported. But that's not the point. The point is, when Mashiach comes, it won't be you know, a, a big a big Rebbe you know, coming in with, uh, with uh, millions of dollars, fundraise, etc., etc. It'll be a poor person. That's what we'll deserve. Shemit ave matayavo legaleinu. Because he's going to, and he's going to come because he knows that we've been waiting for him for such a long time. He quotes a story that happened in the, in the, in the Midrash. It talks about Yeshua ben Levi, the Midrash in Kolbo. It talks about a Midrash there where Rabbi Yeshua ben Levi, uh, while still alive, goes to Gan Eden, and there he sees Mashiach. And he asks them about the Jews and what they're doing in the world, etc. And he says that they're, they're waiting. But we're, we're, we're waiting for Mashiach. That's what we're doing. What are the Jews doing? They're golfing. No. What are the Jews doing? They're at the beach. No. What are the Jews doing? No. We're waiting for Mashiach. Any day he's going to come. Bring us all back to Eretz Yisrael. And we'll all be able to learn Torah. Un, uh, unadulterated true Torah. Uninhibited by any kind of interruption. That's what we're waiting for. So when he says this, 
Chosid B'chia Rabba, when you heard this, this tzaddik, the Mashiach, he cries. Mitchukato Lavo Lagalame. He why is he crying? Because he desires he wants to come too. He hears that we want him. He wants to come too. It's perfect. What a, what a great shidduch. It says the rest of the verse. Why does it say from one of your brothers? Because he has to be unique amongst your brothers. He's not just a regular guy. He has to be somehow unique. He has to stand out somehow. And he will. As our rabbi say, as it says, um, and this is actually similar to how Unkulus translates, and Rashi explains the pasuk in the, in, the, in towards the end of Bereshi twenty six ten, where uh, where uh, Avimelech uh, says um, one of the people might have slept with your wife. Over there, it says it's not just anybody, not just any one amongst the people. He meant one, number one, numero uno among the people himself. I almost slept with your wife, is what he was saying. And so it says, Being unique means being the king of the people, and that's what Mashiach is going to be when he comes. And then it says, amongst your, in your cities, right, in, in your gates, Sanhedrin. It means he's going to be in the Sanhedrin. At the gates, almost always, implies some sort of a, a judicial appointment, a right? judge, judges sat at the gates. So too, Mashiach is going to be a judge, not just, you know, a famous rabbi, not just a general, not just a lot of the other things that he could be. He's also going to be a judge. He's going to know halacha that well. There's not going to be anybody like him in terms of rulings. Ko'omo v'shafat b'tzedek. As it says in Yeshayahu in Isaiah eleven four, he will judge the people, um, right? Um, and he won't need to even see lo b'mare inav yishpot. He's not going to need to judge based on what he sees. Ella laharichu biirat Hashem. He'll be able to use his nose, right? He's by by reach, right? By the, by the by just that. Just by his his uh, his olfactory senses, he's going to be able to be able to recognize what the truth. He's going to be sniff out the truth, right? So that's uh, no one no one's able to do that. No no one's a judge like that, but he will be. Furthermore, Peru Sharech Al Derech Amru Omro Alta Yiv Yivimto Bishara, and also the gates are uh, similar to what it says. We're going to see later on that his when it says his sister-in-law shall ascend to the gate, meaning that the gate of Bedin, the Omru Ba'art Sechem, it has to be in the land. This means Lair Kol Horto Yedob Er Tisrael Hakadosha. This tells you that Mashiach has to come, at least that sort of Mashiach, the one that, that's going to come under these poor conditions, is going to be somebody not born. In Europe, not born in America, and not born anywhere else, born only in Eretz Yisrael, the, the Holy Land. That's where Mashiach has to come from uh, in this understanding of Mashiach. Point of this uh, being, again, that the Torah is vast, is deep, is very meaningful, and even something as simple as the laws of how to take care of the poor have has in it references to more important historical events the one historical event we're all waiting for the coming of mashiach hinted to in this verse and that's not all there are other important references in this very concept as well we just read this verse we'll read it again in a completely different context it says if there's a poor person from your brothers uh, in in your cities, your land, Hashem is going to give you. Don't hold back your heart. Don't uh, don't freeze your heart. And don't keep your hand from your poor brother. What should you do? So the next verse, verse eight says, 
certainly open your hand to him, lo, ve'avet ta'avitenu, de mechasro asher yechsar lo. And you should make sure he is able to fit his needs from anything that he is missing. Vilna Gon has a commentary on a short story in the Gemara that I think will be illuminating, especially in the context that we just mentioned, that the Torah is vast and has hints to things beyond, beyond our, 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 our ordinary knowledge, and it fits perfectly together with the rest of the Torah. It says in the Gemara in Bava Batra, there's a short story towards the bottom of the page on page 10a. It's a story where Rav Papa Haya Salik Bidarga, Rav Papa was going on a ladder. Ishtimish Kare Bay Mipel Amar Hashta Ko Achiav Khan Sani Lan Mikhaleli Shabatu the Ovde of Vodazara Amale Chay Barav. If the Rav Papa Shema Ani Baliyadcha Velo Pirnasti Pirnasto, so he slipped, he fell. Uh, so, so, so he he asked himself, why, why did this happen to me? So Rav Papa answered him. So sorry, this is Rav Papa. So he he Bar Rav tells Rav Papa, you know why this happened to you? Because probably a poor person came to you to ask for money and you didn't give him. That's where the Gemara ends. That that seems to be enough for everybody else. Problem is, that's not enough for the Vilna Gon, and shouldn't be enough for us either, because we need to ask ourselves: How did Rav Chia Bar Rav know that? How did he know that Rav Papa slipped and almost fell and almost got hurt? All because of uh, all because of of this, because he uh, he didn't give tzedakah. How did you know that that happened? Where did that come from? So we need to look at some of the words, some of the language might help us. Oh, oops. Uh, I don't think I added this to the uh, to the source sheet. Give me one quick moment. Uh, okay, I got this, don't worry. I know you're worried, but don't be worried. We've got this. We're going to look at the sheet itself. And here we are. Um, and I hate when that happens. Ah, Hashem. Let's go back to this. And not this, but this. Share the screen again. Okay, here we go. I do apologize. Okay, says the Vilna Gon. I gotta get rid of my face. But pasuk keep it talk. Tiftach et yedecha, etc. Hine ita begemora b'mesachet papa batra. He tells the story there. He was going up the ladder and he fell. And uh, Rav Chia tells him maybe it's because a poor person asked you for money and you didn't give it. So that, he, that's the Vilna Gon. Oop, that's not it. Um, okay. And so he continues with Tarikh Liyod Bituach Sha'in Shum Yudrolim Mamachana Rav Shalahem Inyan Hasakana. There's nothing in the event that, 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 uh, that implies any kind of poverty. And what does that have to do? Um, one second. No, this is the wrong piece. Uh, give me one quick moment. Okay, good. One moment. Ay, ay, ay. Here we go. Sorry for the technical difficulties. There you go. That's what I was looking for. That's what I was looking for. Here we go. And yalla. All right. Uh, Ayn Sham, look, look over there. How did he know that the punishment was because of this? You can say, on the words, 
mutamim bedarga tavir. The the uh, the cantillation marks above the words patoach tiftach, patoach tiftach. That that's called a darga tavir. And darga tavir is Aramaic. The rem is rum is it's alem min hatzedaka tivra darga. That uh, tivra uh, taver darga is tivra darga means your uh, your ladder will slip. Tivra darga tachtav go under it. So because his ladder slipped, because his ladder slipped, that fits in perfectly with the verse in uh, in. Sorry, here we go. Uh, in the in, in this pasuk, so you see uh, right above. Tiftoch, 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 right? That is called, uh, that's that's what he's calling this broken ladder. So because you didn't give to the Ani, this is the punishment that you deserve. This is the punishment that you get. And again, there's a reference, there's a hint in our Misora with the cantillation marks. The cantillation marks themselves Hint to this event, which now makes which makes this whole Gemara, this very short story in the Gemara, make a lot more sense. And that's what the Torah can do when you combine it all together, and you have a mind like the Vilna Gons, and you have the stories of the Gemara, and you have the beauty and the Mesora of the Torah Hakadosha. It tells us not only who Mashiach is going to be, not only how you should behave, not only how vast our reward is, but even that our punishments are limited. And God willing, we should know so, of such things as punishments. We should only see bracha and continue to see bracha this week, next week, leading into next year and for the rest of our lives. Thank you for joining me. Have a Shabbat Shalom.